So you've just submitted homework four, and I apologize that the, uh, I think maybe a couple of you tried to submit between noon and one, and I accidentally had the submission closing early. So those all have to be manually set, and uh, so I apologize for the mistake. Um, I did get one submission by email, and that's totally fine. It's no problem there. Uh, the next assignment, homework five, I've just handed out to you. It's also posted on Blackboard. Um, the main part of that assignment is a Hardy Cross method problem, similar to what we're going to do as an example today. And then there's also two problems on there related to water hammer and surge tanks, which we'll talk about later this week. Um, so today we're going to do another example with the Hardy Cross method. We kind of had a simplistic approach just to learn the idea behind the process on Monday's class. And today we're going to go a bit further and um, kind of do the full-fledged problem uh, with more pipes. And you're going to get the chance to determine the initial flow balance rather than me just giving you the one to start with. You'll do the entire process from beginning to end. Um, just as a reminder, the, uh, the procedure is to examine how many loops there are and to determine what n value is being used. And so both in this earlier example and the one I just handed you, there's two loops. And we use n of 2 when there is the uh, Darcy-Wiesbach equation for friction loss. You'd use an n of 1.85 if you're using the Hayes and Williams equation. Um, clockwise is positive. That's how we determine whether a flow is positive or negative when we put it in the spreadsheet, is clockwise positive. And um, on the example we're going to work today, each of the junctions is already labeled, and so the pipes will be named just based on the endpoints of the junction. So there'll be, for example, pipe AB, pipe BC, and so on. And then it becomes that numerical process of calculating, well, starting with a guess flow rate based on just flow balance. The, the guess flow rates, remember, is, uh, well, let me go to this second example here. Uh, we'll look at the picture to begin with, and then I'll come back to that other slide in a second. Um, so in the first iteration, what we have to do to determine the R value is we'll use the, um, the fully turbulent flow assumption for our first guess of the F value. And remember, the fully turbulent flow assumption says just assume that Reynolds numbers are high and that F value only determines, is only determined by the relative roughness. Um, but the first step is really to come up with the guess flow rates. And so you can see in this example that there's one cubic meter per second coming in at A. So what that means then is you have to decide where to send that one cubic meter per second. Some of it will go down towards junction F. Some of it will go over towards junction B. And there's really no wrong answer when you do that first guess. And the reason why, by the way, I handed out this paper is I'd like you to sketch on paper your initial flow balance and work with someone else. Don't just do this individually. You know, check because um, it's so easy to get the initial flow balance wrong and then the problem itself will never converge. If your initial flow balance does not have in equal out at each of the junctions, then it doesn't matter how many, iter how many iterations you do, the problem will never uh, conclude successfully. So, um, start with the inflows, just splitting the flow between the two pipes it could go to, both at A and D. And um, I'll pause for a second and give you a chance to work on that. I have to run upstairs and grab my notes for this. And then I'll show you which initial assumptions I started with. And you can go with yours as we step through the, uh, the spreadsheet together. So be working on the initial flow balance. All right, you've got your initial flow balance done. Uh, let me just point out that the column titles are going to be different in this second example because in the first example that we worked on Monday, the R values were given and they didn't change. But that was um, oversimplified because what we know is that 
if the flow rate is changing, so is the friction factor. And so we're going to have to dynamically adjust the R values based on updated flow conditions. So we'll do that in each iteration. And as a result, if you look at the second worksheet in that template file that I gave you, the uh, example two has different column headings than the first one did. Now you can see what assumptions I've made for my flow directions, but you can feel free to put in, go with yours. I think maybe you'll find the example more interesting if you use your flow assumptions, and it'll be interesting to see that it all does converge on the same flow rate regardless of you know, whether you said that there would be 0.5 going from A to F or 0.1. It eventually should all get to the same answer as long as our process is correct. Okay, so we have to go through this first uh, step of translating the data into, um, into the table. So we're in iteration one, and you can see that I've labeled loop two as the upper loop, and loop, loop one is the upper loop, loop two is the lower one. So let's be consistent with that. So loop one, and we'll go through and identify the pipes that are in loop one. There's A, B, B, C, C, E, E, F, and A, F in loop one. Okay, the case of S for each of these pipes is uh, 0.0003. I think that was given on the handout. All the pipes have a case of S of 0.3 millimeters, and here I've put the case of S in terms of meters, so it's 0 0.0003. And so I'm just going to drag that down so that it applies to all of the pipes. You do the same. Uh, the diameter of each of the pipes, so AB has a diameter of 0.5, BC has a diameter of 0.65, CE is 0.6, EF has a diameter of 0.7, and AF has a diameter of 0.4. Okay, now to calculate the cross-sectional area, of course we're just going to do pi times d squared divided by 4. And then we can drag that down for each of the different pipe diameters. We'll have a different cross-sectional area. And then put in the length of each of the pipes. So 220 meters, 100 meters, 150, 80 meters, and 180. Okay, I'll pause for a moment just in case you need to catch up and keying in that data. All right, so this next column, you can see that it says, let's assume fully turbulent flow because we couldn't calculate the full F value until we know the Reynolds number, and we don't know that yet. So we're just gonna use the Jane equation, but assume Reynolds number is really big for our initial guess of F values. So our F value will be 1.325 divided by the ln of k sub s divided by 3.7 divided by d. Close parentheses and square. Okay, so if we do that right, then we should get 0 0.0174 for the f value of pipe AB, and we can drag the formula down to the other pipes in the network and uh, get our initial guess of F values. If we were feeling lazy, we could just guess like 0.02 for all of them and then start using the calculated F values in the next iteration. But this will help our solution to converge quicker if we start with a better guess than just picking some midpoint value. But Technically, we could get convergence just by starting with a pure guess here rather than an educated guess. You can think of the fully turbulent flow maybe as better than just guessing out of thin air. Any questions so far? 
Now, the handout I've given you defines what we're going to use for R. So R is F times L divided by 2GA squared D. Okay, so let's translate that here into the spreadsheet. R is equal to F times pipe length divided by 2 times 9.81 times area squared times D. Okay. So R, remember, is resistance. And then the head loss will simply be R times Q squared. So R is all of the constants that go into the head loss due to pipe friction. So for this first pipe, the R value is 10.12. And pipes that are short will have a relatively lower resistance. Like look at pipe EF. What are the things that's making pipe EF have such a low resistance? Well, it's a short pipe, and it's got a big diameter. So plenty of water can go through there without much head loss. In contrast to a small diameter pipe that is long, like AF is our smallest diameter pipe, and that's what's driving up the flow resistance through pipe AF. Okay, now the N value is 2 for all of these. And now we're going to start translating our guess flow rates into filling in the table. So I had my own guess flow rates. And remember, we're, first of all, clockwise is positive. So if any of these arrows would go in the same direction as a clockwise loop, then we make it positive. And if it's against that, it'll be negative. So look at AB. That's going to be positive because it's with the clockwise direction. But BC will be negative because that arrow is going up and clockwise would say positive is from B towards C. So BC is going to be negative, CE will be positive, EF is going to be negative from the perspective of loop 1, and AF is also going to be negative because that's anti-clockwise compared to clockwise being positive. So you can go with your initial guess values. You don't have to use the guess values that I'm putting in, but I'm going to translate my estimates of flow rate into the table here. So I'll do that silently, and you can as well. If you make one of the values negative when it should be positive, or vice versa, then your solution will never converge. And I've already mentioned that if you didn't have flow balance at each junction, then your solution also wouldn't converge. So we have zero tolerance for, for any mistakes whatsoever, or this method doesn't work. OK, so we've got our flow rate just for loop one. You'll notice that we haven't yet started filling in all the data for loop 2. And that's because some of the values for loop 2 haven't been calculated yet. Remember, we always go with our most recently updated guess of a flow rate. And once we finish loop 1, we're going to have new guesses for the flow through CE and EF. Okay, But let's just start with these formulas. So R times Q times absolute value of Q. So R times Q times ABS, absolute value of Q. And distribute that function down through all of the rows that we've defined. And then also, we need to add it up right below there. So sum of those terms. I like to put that in italics, maybe, just to make it stand out from the values above it. Now, n times r times absolute value of q. Let 
me pause here and I'm going to circulate around to see if anybody has questions so far on the spreadsheets that you're preparing. Okay, um, now the delta Q, remember, is the formula where it is equals minus of this term divided by that term. And so just to show you where that is, here is our formula for delta Q. And that minus sign is easy to forget. That's one of the common mistakes I see when I'm going through and checking these spreadsheets. And so equals minus this divided by that. You may be tempted to anchor the reference and then just drag it down, but then you won't be able to copy and paste subsequent iterations. So for the first iteration, you really do have to just type this in manually, equals negative this divided by that. You just have to type it in. Well, it'll save you time if you do this first time around manually calculate it all those times. The corrected flow rate is our initial guess plus the correction factor. So the initial guess flow rate Q plus delta Q. Okay. And then you'll notice that uh, we're going to determine the velocity of the flow so that we can get the Reynolds number. So the absolute value of the velocity. So that is ABS for absolute, absolute value of the flow rate, Q divided by the area of the pipe. So now we know how many meters per second the water is as it flows through the pipes. And then that is useful because we're going to calculate the Reynolds number. And of course, Reynolds number is velocity times diameter divided by the kinematic viscosity, where kinematic viscosity is 1 times 10 to the minus 6 meters squared per second. OK, so here for Reynolds number, it's the velocity times the diameter divided by 1 e minus 6, because that's our kinematic viscosity is 1 times 10 to the minus 6. Okay, so we've got a Reynolds number through the pipe. And you'll notice here I've got a column that I'm calling percent change. And that's just so that we can see how big of a difference in flow rate there has been between our initial guess and this updated corrected flow rate. It can be used as an indicator of whether our solution has converged. And so to calculate that, it is the initial flow rate um, minus the corrected flow rate divided by the corrected flow rate times 100. So it's the change divided by the updated value times 100. So you can see that um, our initial guess was too small for this pipe AB, and when it was corrected, it got bigger by 17.1%. Um, we will want these percent changes to be down below 1% before we feel pretty good that our solution has converged. So we're definitely not there yet. Quite a lot of changes occurring. And your values are going to be different if you had a different flow balance. In this first stage, you know, if, if you had different guesses of the initial flow rates, then all of this is going to be different until the very end. So don't panic if your percent changes are different and if your velocities are different. It'll get to where it needs to in the end. Okay, now we need to start thinking about loop two. So loop two has the following pipes. It's got pipe CD, pipe CE, EF, and DF. Those are the pipes in loop two. And let's fill in the data that we know about them. The K sub S values are still the point zero 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 three for all of the pipes. The diameters are 0 0.85, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, and 0.5. And from that, we can calculate 
the areas. You can just copy from the formula that was in loop one and paste it down onto a row that you want it calculated. Or you can just drag it down and it'll give you a zero here, but then you delete that. But calculate the area and then the lengths of each of those pipes. So 80 meters, 150 meters, 80 meters, and 200. OK. Again, we'll just use the Jane equation, fully turbulent flow assumption for this first iteration. And then in subsequent iterations, we'll use the full version of the Jane equation. So I'm just going to copy this down. I guess I can just drag it down and delete the one that didn't have any row. So I've got updated F values and the R formula. I can also drag that down through because I'd calculated it above. So the R value approach carries through. The N values are still just two everywhere. All right. Flow rates. This is where we have to think. We have to be careful. Okay, so pipe CD, that is not one of the common pipes. By common pipes, I mean a pipe that's in both loops. So pipe CE is one we have to be really careful with, and EF we have to be really careful with. And maybe just to help me remember that I have to be careful with them, I'm going to highlight CE and EF, and I'm going to make it bold. And that way, CE and EF in bold, it reminds me that those pipes are special because they're shared in common both between loop one and loop two. Okay, so what was our initial guess for the flow rate at pipe CD? I had 0.6 and it's going up opposite to the clockwise direction, so I'm going to put in negative 0.6 for mine. But you can put in whatever your initial guess flow rate was. And let me do also pipe DF. DF is 0.6, but clockwise direction, so positive 0.6. Now these other flow rates I didn't fill in yet because these are the ones where I don't go with just the initial guess. This is where you have to use your most recently updated estimate of the flow rate. And so for pipe CE, what flow rate should go into pipe CE? Negative 0.603. That's exactly right. So why negative? Because if I'm getting the value from the previous loop, the previous loop had a different perspective of what was positive and what was negative. Because something that looks like here in loop 1, that 0.5 would be in the clockwise direction. But then clockwise in loop 2, that's, that's opposing clockwise. So if you ever get a flow rate from a different loop, you need to do equals negative of that updated value. So equals of negative of that corrected Q. And then same thing here for pipe EF. Equals negative of this value for pipe EF. OK. So um, R times Q times absolute value of Q, I can do that. R times Q times ABS of Q. And distribute that same formula through all of the active rows. And same thing with N times R times the absolute value of Q. And drag that down. And then we have to calculate the sum of those values just for loop 2. Don't do the sum of everything above it. We just want to sum up these four pipes. So equal sum of those four values. I'm going to italicize it just to draw the distinction between the entered values above it and this place where we're calculating the sum. 
And then the same thing for the delta Q that we did before, where it's equal, negative, this one divided by that one. Equals negative, this divided by that. Let me pause for a second, circulate around, and if you have questions, I'll be glad to take a look. Okay, so the corrected flow rate will be the guess plus the correction. And then we do the same thing of calculating the absolute, veloc absolute value of the velocity, calculate the Reynolds number, calculate the percent change. And it doesn't really matter if the percent change is positive or negative. It's just the magnitude that we're looking for. All right. Um, now, what we can do is copy all of this preliminary data for the next iteration. So I'm going to control C to copy it. And then I'm going to paste it down here with a gap row in between. And I'm going to change that. I'm calling it iteration two. OK, so the F values, I'm no longer assuming the fully turbulent flow assumption. So I'm going to type in the full Jane equation for the F values. OK, so let's see how much, if at all, the F values change. 1.325 divided by ln of K sub S divided by 3.7 divided by diameter plus 5.74 divided by the Reynolds number from the previous iteration. That's where I'm going to get my Reynolds number is up here to the power of 0.9. I need to close parentheses twice and square it. OK, so it, the F value went from 0.174 in the previous iteration when it was just the fully turbulent flow assumption to 0 0.0178. So for that particular pipe, it's a subtle change, but it will be more noticeable for others of these pipes. So I can drag that formula down through all of the equations. I'm not sure why I've got a different font all of a sudden. Now it's in nine point font. Let me update that. How strange. I wonder why it went to nine point font. Do 11. Some of the pipes, the uh, F value changed a little bit more than others. But um, so the R, I can copy this R in the N column and just recopy and paste. So I have slightly different R values than I had before. But the real change is going to come with these new values of Q. So remember, I typed these in manually for the most part in the first iteration. But in the second iteration, I'm going to use the corrected Q as the input. So where's my most recent value? And remember why I had these ones in bold? I had these ones in bold to remind me it's a common pipe. And so I need to look elsewhere for the flow rate. So for this one, I'm going to go to iteration one, loop one for the flow rate. And same thing for pipe BC. But then pipe CE, that's the one in bold, I'm going to say equals negative of the flow rate that was calculated in loop two of the previous iteration. Same thing with pipe EF, equals negative of the value from loop two. And then AF is from loop one. So I've got corrected flow rates. And now I can just copy, let me think. I can copy all of this. And because I've got relative references set up, I can paste it into the location below. And it's giving me all the updates that I need. All right, pipe BC is kind of squirrely. There's not much flow going through BC. And so it had a huge percent change in the first iteration, but the percent change is coming down. The percent change for all of them is coming down, which is a good sign. Things are headed in the right direction. We would be concerned if the percent change was getting bigger. That would be an indication that maybe there's a formula error someplace. Okay, so now I can move on to loop two. 
So I'm putting in the flow rates. So equals of the value from the previous iteration for the flow rate. And then pipe CE, it's going to be my most recently calculated guess. So equals negative of this value for CE. Same thing for EF, equals negative of just the previous loop. And then finally, DF is from the previous iteration. OK, and I can copy and paste all of these formulas and functions from the previous loop version of loop 2. So control C and paste it here. And with some luck, we'll see that the percent change is getting lower. It was in the 20s to 40% range before. Now it's 3 to 6%. So things are getting smaller. And then I can do this several more times, and it just is pretty easy. I can copy the entire both loops, the entire iteration, control C. I got to make sure I get the spacing right. I'm going to paste it into the location below, control V. All I have to do is just change this number to reflect that it's our third iteration. And look, the percent changes are getting smaller. It was in the 3% range in the second iteration. Now I'm under 1% for most of these pipes. The only pipe that is still above 1% change is pipe BC. And that's just because there's very little flow going through pipe BC. If you look, it's 0 0.019 is the flow rate. And so I'll do this a couple more iterations just because it's easy to. And I want to see if the flow rate is going to converge for uh, pipe BC. So now I'm going to paste for a fourth iteration. And we're approaching 1% for that pipe. So look at how the, uh, the flow rates are basically not changing from the beginning of the iteration to the end of the iteration. So for example, our input guess flow rate was 0 0.792. 0 0.792 is the output flow rate. So the Q and the corrected Q didn't really change much for most of these pipes. And that's why these percent changes are so small. So what is the indication that the solution is converged? For one thing, the F values are constant. Look at how the F value from this iteration and the previous iteration is about the same. So when the F values converge, that's a good sign. And when the, the flow rates aren't changing from loop to loop, that's a good sign. And here is the final flow rates. So the last thing I need to check is does in equal out for all of those junctions? And just by a quick glance, I can see that in does equal out at all of the junctions. Now we're out of time. It's 148. If we wanted to calculate the pressure at each of these junctions, what we'll do is we'll start when we get together on, uh, on Friday. We'll start by knowing the pressure at A and using that to calculate the pressure at each of these other locations. All right, so that's all for today. I love going over these spreadsheets. So if you have a problem you can't figure out, help me, uh, let me help you debug it. Because it seems strange, but I, I really like this method and I like looking at Excel spreadsheets. So if you have a problem and, and you can't figure it out, let me know. Yeah, yeah. If you had to do this by pencil, you'd be crying for sure. All right. Have a good one.